Hello. Good to see you all again. Welcome back to another episode of So What, our conversational sewing show where we just talk about all things sew sewing. With me, Stuart from the Woolpatch, and of course with Carol Elaine, our master tailor couturier. Hey, Carol. Hello, Stuart. Finally. Oh, we've come to an end. My shop is a mess. <laughs> I have to clean, but I'm going to give myself a couple of days. I'm just going to rest, just clean the obvious bits, and then... <laughs> <sighs> You've been so busy. Viewers out there, we, 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 we went to do a show last week and uh, Carol said, I've got deadlines coming out in the years and people oh. rechanging and rescheduling. Yeah, so. That's it. And so You've many busy. things. I've been really, really busy. I'm lucky. I'm so grateful. Yeah, we had some really fun projects this year and it just seemed that the, you know, the order book was never, never even medium full. It was always packed. And um, I think people are just, wanting to get clothing this way you know they're thinking deeper about yeah. it and and making oh, use true. of clothes that were beautifully made you know decades ago and and wanting to restyle them and then wanting to invest in new bespoke because it's sustainable and oh, it's brilliant. you know it's unique and no one else has it and it's so you know i'm just one of the lucky ones of yeah. this very crazy couple of years that we've oh. all had to suffer through so so that's it now for the Christmas holidays. Is it no, no nothing in the books? You're, that's you're it. No, <clears throat> no, I'm just working on a fun little project, which I, I can show you later. It's just not tailoring at all. It's not sourcing cloth. Okay. It's not drafting patterns. It's not fitting. It's just fun. So will you, we can talk will, about that. With your studio there, will you clear up tomorrow or is that it? You're going to not go anywhere near it for two weeks? Oh, I, well, I, during this time of the year, during Christmas and New Year, what I really like to do is give everything a good clean. And I like to oil the scissors and clean all the tools, polish everything up. And, and also I like to look at the inventory because the year goes by, I just keep stashing things places, you know, hoarding right. supplies and things. And I like to look at what I've got, you know, what, what actually do I have in here and, and what's worth keeping, what's worth giving away to charity or giving away to school. Um, giving it to other teachers that are teaching sewing. So it's, you can, you know how fast you can accumulate boxes and boxes of things, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You know? yes. and, and, and all this stuff is an investment. It costs money. And they're telling us that they're going to cost more money in the new year. The, some, a factor of, say, 27% in some cases is going to be added on to tools and fabrics and raw materials that we use. You don't want to get rid of that you know, unnecessarily or on a whim, it, you know, yeah, if it has I, a useful life, you want to pass it on. Yeah, I got lots of letters through from suppliers uh, saying that the cost of raw materials, cotton has gone up. So fabric that I buy for the shop, um, and most of it is American brands, um, American patchwork cotton like Moda, United Notions, Michael yes. Miller, Riley Blake, they're all, all going up. So yeah. it's going to become... And, and for us here, it's going to be even more expensive because we ship it in. I, I think it's still quite cheaper over in America but buying patchwork yes. fabric, but over here, yes. sadly. And I think that means dressmaking fabric is going to go up because normally dressmaking fabric is, is cheaper than patchwork cotton, but it's all going to go up, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Our woolens that are manufactured here will be okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, inflation will affect it, but... It's not going to have that logistical problem. No, no, because no. we've got big uh, <laughs> shipping. Uh, there's issues with shipping uh, and companies having to pay for cargo ships or containers. They've gone up silly amount of prices. I know, I know. I, I don't know how we're going to, yeah. be, because you have to absorb some of it. We can't pass it all on to the customer. No, no, it's right. Absolutely. So sense. when do you think you're starting again in the new year? I have one garment that needs to go out to the UAE um, on new, by New Year's Eve. Um, so I'll, I'll have to make that. It's gonna be a 48 hour project. So I'll need oh, okay. two or three days. That, so I can do that. I can do that. And then there's, like I said, it's just the shop is such a wreck and I just need to 
to just spend two or three days just cleaning, listening to music. Oh, lovely. Oh, and yeah. just taking maybe a long walk in the morning or a long walk in the evening yeah. and um, just enjoying this time where, you know, the, the door isn't being beaten down by, by deadlines and people wanting to collect things. Oh, wonderful. Well, yeah. I'm going till Friday here in the shop. So that's Christmas Eve. It uh -huh. tends to go a bit quieter. So some of the ladies have said they'll pop in and have uh, a cup of tea if I'm on my own. And so it, it, that will be nice having some, some company and company for them too. Um, because as you say, it's all a bit quiet at the moment outside, isn't it? People are a bit wary at the moment. So um, uh, hopefully that will, that will keep me going till Friday. Um, I was thinking of you, Stuart. I was thinking of your business the other day and with things getting a bit quieter and we're all going to be you know we're going to be confined a little bit more there is talk about restrictions mm. coming in after christmas um and people are going to want to get busy you know and they're going to want to learn things learn things do new things do you have gift certificates like first um, knitting lessons or sewing lessons or something absolutely like that? Uh, and how is that going it's, it's going really well, actually. Um, and because we're a crafting shop, and as you say, when we're, we're stuck at home, and if there are more restrictions in January, people are knitting more and crocheting more. So ultimately, they are buying more, too. But yes, we could do all sorts. We could do gift vouchers online. You can go onto the website and buy online. Um, and then some people come in for live classes here at this table, and I'll sit and teach knitting patchwork in fact i've got two ladies uh coming in on christmas eve uh just to have fun just sewing doing some patchwork um because they well it's you know, get some christmas music on get get um some mince pies out <laughs> why not you know all the all the senses all the senses of this time of year and, and and if people out there know of someone who they might think well they, they, they'd be a good candidate for learning something Oh, you should yeah. call you up, call up the yeah. workshop and, and, yeah. and give somebody the gift of a knitting lesson and get oh, them started. Oh, a lovely idea. And mm -hmm. you don't have to be local. We could do it also, uh, you know, like this over the computer. So you can, you could teach somebody to knit yeah. online. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's much harder. It's much yeah. harder because it's like watching YouTube, but, you know, looking at the fingers and everything, you you mm -hmm. do, you, you miss having that that touch and, and that guidance with hands, like it's mm -hmm. often helpful with teaching. But yes, we can still do like virtual as well. Um, and I think people, you know what, New Year's resolutions, people often want to, to do new things in the new year, don't they? Are you making any New Year's resolutions? Oh, I haven't even thought about that yet. <laughs> I, I've finished, I've put the scissors down, I've poured myself yeah. a glass of wine, yeah. and I'm just looking forward to a nice chat. Yeah. And then after that, I'm gonna walk out. We're gonna go hear a carol concert by <gasps> candlelight at uh, St. Oh. Martin in the Fields Church. So, oh, that's gonna be lovely. The start of my Christmas. Yeah, yeah. oh, and you're in a lovely, uh, uh, nice knitted garment there. That's nice. Oh, of... I know, my, my oh. nice warm jumper. <laughs> Not very <laughs> Christmassy, but it is warm. <laughs> Yeah, and so are you. You're looking very colourful. Yes, I'm in my uh, woolen knit that one of the ladies knitted for me. This is out of a Br British wool. It's um and it's great. And it's uh you've got the yoke which is done with a variegated, and you uh -huh. have this this slip stitch orange in ah. between, and then the the main body is um just orange. Oh, I see. And what do you call that stitch, the orange one? Because that's quite regulated, isn't it? It is. It's that... a rib. It's a it's a good old uh -huh. classic rib, would you believe? Okay. You all the way up. Knit oh, one, yes, yes, yes. pearl one, knit one, pearl one. Lovely. Okay. If I remember back, back, back to when I think I learned to knit, I think my Grammy taught me, but is one of them, when you knit, you bring the thread toward you and then the other one oh is it the needle the needle goes in through You're the right. front and then or the You're back pretty much right yes oh, and knit okay. you have the yarn at the back that goes to the ball and you push the needle in and for yes. a pearl you bring the yarn to the front so it's in front yes. of you and almost yes. put the needle towards you oh That's i it. see two and stitches then 
and you repeat that over and over and over again, and yeah. row by row, you, so you're working horizontally. I see it. But then vertically, you get that stripe. Yeah, you that do, and, and, and you get different effects according to where you do, if I stretch it, Yes, yes. See, there's the knit and then the pearls in there. There's the knit. And it's oh, just see. like it's just like your classic rib. This is a tight the, the rib normally is tighter. So um you can see it's a knit and a pearl there. But that's all knitting is two oh. stitches and you change yeah. the order of them to get different mm. effects. I love it. I love it. Oh, it's such a versatile skill to have, isn't oh, it? Absolutely. And you can yeah. make all manner of things. Yeah, indeed. And I think I'm going to do a lot of knitting over the Christmas holidays, I think. Sitting, oh, watching TV, <laughs> fingers going away. Well, trying to. I'm trying to get better at yeah. watching and, and, you know, getting that feel and not looking at my fingers. <laughs> oh, that's, that sounds like a trick. And, Absolutely. And speaking about my fingers, uh, we were going to talk briefly about this, weren't we? Well, I was looking just locally. Yeah. At my sewing machine. Yeah. And I've come up with this. Cool. I mean, I know. I know. It's makes all, me, it makes me feel very, <laughs> very comfortable that a, a, a courier <laughs> has a handful of those. I know. So you lose them. They fall on the floor. So you, you need to have another one ready. But also you've got ones that are really delicate. For, for more a, de a delicate job, and yeah. then some which are a bit more robust for, you know, heavier weights. And they're, they're so handy. I mean, I use these for all sorts of things. So first of all, not unrelated to sewing. Maybe you get something, you know, maybe you get a pattern and staple together. Actually, a seam ripper is great for removing a staple, believe it or not. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I also use it as an awl. So if I've got, um, if I've got a, like I'm you. Oh, if like I'm, we've done before, when, we get, when we're sewing and we're yeah. going up to the press of foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you can use it to, to actually make a hole, you know, by twisting it around, making a hole. And if I'm uh, transferring a dart onto some fabric, I'll use this to make a hole and then I'll run some chalk over it and the chalk dust will fall in the hole and it will mark my dart. Oh, brilliant, yeah. so clever, yeah. And, and then, um, oh, the all sorts of things. If I'm pattern drafting, I can use it to just hold one sheet of paper, which is on top of another sheet of paper, and then you can pivot the paper around if you're moving a dart. Oh, yeah. Transferring a marking from one pattern to your amended pattern, you can use this. Um, so there's just all sorts of things. The other thing is sometimes you're sewing, you're sewing a line of stitching and you don't want a back stitch because no. it looks lumpy and you know, it, it, sometimes the stitches don't fall on top of the, the, the stitches you've made. So I just stop sewing. I take the garment out of the machine and I leave a nice tail of threads mm. and I turn the fabric over. I pull the bottom thread slightly and you'll see the loop of the top thread will come oh, through. And yes. I use the point to gently Correct. coax that thread and then I tie it in a knot. Yeah. And that way you've just got a clean row stitching. Yeah. So that, that, you know, that's another use. And then of course, to unpick, you can do a number of different techniques. So you, you uh, have a line of threads, you've made a mistake, they need to come out you can undo, you can slice through every four or five and then turn your work around and just lift off the bottom thread. Or you can gently coax out five or six stitches so you have a tail, mm -hmm. a thread, tail thread, and then move along four or five and then cut a thread and then use your tail to pull out Oh, I see. Those next five stitches. Five. That's good because you don't end up with a bunch of half stitches Not, just floating all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah. I very rarely use the tool this way 
where I just poke that through the seam and just run it along. I, I find going, that a bit risky. I was going to say, is there a specific, because of this, the way it's um, designed, it, mm -hmm. when I first got the seam ripper, I thought it was supposed to be lift the seam up and like, like um it's like going through the Suez Canal, just going yes, like that. Yes, yeah. And at first I was all excited and went and cut loads. And then you can guess what happened when I went a bit too quick. Yeah. You, yeah. you slice through the fabric, don't you? You do, you do. It's really sharp. This yeah. little this little hook here, the inside of that is really sharp. Yeah. It's a and, razor blade. And I presume, is it is it designed with that? ballpoint there is it designed because most people well no is it is it is it, is it designed <laughs> primarily to do that then it is that is. what we think we're supposed to use it for it, it is in the, and because that little, that little ball is on the top that is supposed to kind of just ride along between you know in the seam yeah. allowance between yeah. there and then not cause any problems it doesn't catch on anything if it was a different shape, it might catch, but because it's got that that ball in the end of it, it sort of it doesn't get in the way and it doesn't affect anything. Yeah. It's not dangerous, you know. But but uh, but I've hardly used not. it. Yeah, I have used it on denim. Yeah. I've ha I've used it on very very heavy denim where you can practically pull the two pieces of fabric apart and you can see the stitches. You, so right. you can just yeah. you can slice through them all, but um, oh, it's a really clever tool. Yeah. And um, I think you know, your your first way is is the way I now use all the time. In in if I piece two pieces together and it's it's out of sync, I'll I'll look at my top row of stitching. I'll I'll I I, I go in. What is it? Yeah. So the stitching's going that way. So I'll go. Yes. Cut. Per perpendicular to the stitch line. That's yeah. the word. Cut yeah. a couple, miss two or three, do another yeah. one, miss two or three, miss another one, do two or three. And then as you say, you can then turn it over and then pull the thread. Mm -hmm. But then you do get lots of those little bits left, don't and you? And it's nice to avoid that. To uh, the other up. thing you can do is if, if you've basted and you want to remove the basting stitches, now you can just, you know, rip three or four, turn it over, rip some more but that's really dangerous because you're going to you're going to affect the cloth there but you can if it's a really long stitch you can give yourself a tail and then gather hold the tail gather the fabric into a bunch mm -hmm. which gives you a very long tail snip that off run the gathers back out so it's flat look on the other side and you'll be able to peel off uh, a lot of that stitch line as well so there's many different ways of doing it but we always talk about preparation we talk about going slower we talk about watching carefully what you do and you just can't be really just being very careful yeah. taking each you know each stitch out or every two or three and it's going to be a cleaner job in the end isn't it mm. Mm. but I say I, I sell two types. I, I've got the all. It's almost like a travel one. It's the small one, isn't it, with a little plastic container, and then there's a, a, a normally a long one with a long. Have yeah. you got one there with a long handle? I do. I've got a couple. That's it. Yeah, yeah. they're like the two one. classic yeah. sort of sizes. But you had another one there that had a almost a tubular handle. Was that right? A circular? Yeah. Oh, that's a posh. Yeah. One. And this one is, and there's there's a, a space for your hands, you know, to, yeah. to, to fit in, for the, the thumb to fit in. I like, you know, it's, these are fine, but it, with, the, with the cover off, there's not a whole lot no. for your hand to cling on to. No, it's right. It's, it's, it's. Yeah. Yeah. So I find it very useful to have the cover yeah. on, on the bottom. And then you've got, you know, you can guide it with your little finger yeah. like this and you've just got some maneuver yeah <laughs> oh well there you are everyone how comforting is that that carol has loads of <laughs> seam seam rippers stitch rippers what do you call it uh, a, i call it a seam ripper which is yeah, a, a, you know it's a bit dramatic i like <laughs> unpick better <laughs> very much so 
Um, mm. Well, that's just nice to know. And I, I, and I think everyone is very, very familiar uh, with, mm. with the, the Ripper. If anyone's got any other ways of they use it, let us know in the comments below. Please but do. I, yes, I, yes. I'd like I, to know other uses. Uh, I would have thought everyone is, uh, as patchworkers, we're all always familiar with that when we, when, especially if we're piecing, you know, uh, uh, squares together and we need, when we put two fabrics and we want that, those intersections, those, those, um, ju those lines to meet. Mm. And, and if you, if you've slightly, your sewing machine has taken, we've often talked about this, haven't we? It takes the top out of sync of the bottom sometimes, doesn't it? And, and, right. and you yeah. lose that lovely intersection that you're supposed to have you yeah. you rip out and the question is you then sew it again is it any better uh i i have a bit of a rule where i i might rip out three three times <laughs> if it's not yeah. good by the, the the third time that stays i'm not ripping out That's again it. because i know yeah give yourself some peace really you know but if it's really off it does offend the eye and it's i know when we're matching checks sometimes we just you just get you just get a sense of how far ahead to put that top layer of fabric how far ahead to put it so that when the when the the um the presser foot rides alongside and drags it down a millimeter or two yeah then it's going to match so it's it's just trial and error on that isn't yeah. it yeah but it's infuriating when it does when you rip it out for the second time and oh. you sew it for the third time and it still yeah. is right yeah it's really maddening it, it it normally works for me by the third time because i don't pin uh in in patchwork i try and get away with that if if so if i have to rip out the first time and do it again then i might go oh okay I'll use some fabric clips. Yes. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll clip. And then if it's, if, if the clips don't work, then I might pin it to, to death for the third time. But that's right. Third time lucky. Yeah. But um, it's, it's a balance, isn't there, of, of what is fun and then what oh, I want to correct it and have it right. But how many more times before it takes the fun out of it? And then you get frustrated and you chuck it across the room. <laughs> And sometimes the best thing to do is just stop. Just stop for 10 minutes. Yeah. And come back to it when you're yeah. less agitated about the whole yeah. mess. <laughs> you know? it, it's so right. It's so hard to do at the time, though, isn't it? Because you want it to is. get it right. Yeah. Especially if you're then clock watching and you go, I want to get this scene done before, <laughs> you know. Oh, completely. Oh, look what I've got to show you. No. Look <laughs> at that. Top yeah. stick button on. So tell me, tell me about the button. How did that work? How did you find it, the... I, it, it worked well. I put the... Um, I'll try and pull it up so you can see. Um, I probably Very good. It's there. Good. They are. Can you see the metal? It's in yep. that seam. It's so in I, the seam. Good, good. I push it down and, yeah. and it's there. And um, I'm pleased with it. The, it's uh, and, I, and I like it. The only thing I... I'll put it on yeah is i don't know whether it's now um a, a tad too too um good fitting is there not enough <clears throat> excuse me a blues on or, um, or i don't know I how it's supposed to be worn um because that's that's now profile <clears throat> yeah i, I don't know whether there's good. supposed to be more there and it's mm -hmm. supposed to be is it supposed to be down like that I don't know. I think the style of it is to be more, more blues. I think it's incredibly handsome. Oh. Well done. You, you've got a very good, you've got a good, good thing going for hats, Stuart. You do. I've, I really enjoyed making it yeah. and I'm, and I'm thrilled that it's there, but it's, it's now getting that look on how you wear it. Um, and I think it will wear, uh, it certainly mm. will wear in, won't it? It will. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wear, it's, I mean, it's still, it's still room there. It's not stupidly tight. Um, mm. Maybe the, the viewers can let us know. How, I'm no fashion expert. I'm no guru. I know there are certain ways of wearing hats. And I, I know girls wear hats differently to blokes. Um, but um, I, I, I say uh, uh, how you wear it or whether you're supposed to then 
tack that bit down yes. at the front yeah, do, but then yeah. I think there's supposed to be more fabric for that but that might be a different hat that might have a different name I know this yeah. is the Baker Boy cap is the Baker Boy cap supposed to go up that way rather than sit <laughs> down on the top there yes. It just looks terrific. Where, when you got the pattern, is there a picture of somebody wearing it? it there, there is a, a picture. Uh, uh, Adam has put a picture on, and actually, the picture is like this. It goes, okay. it goes upwards. Yeah, so it doesn't, okay. it doesn't come forward and fall flat down yeah. because I, I presume that's a flat cap. But yes, exactly. And this is this is this is a Baker Boy cap. So yeah. I might have to do some research there, or our wonderful viewers can tell us the difference between a Baker Boy cap and and where maybe. where the peak or that fabric is supposed to go. Maybe there's some milliners out there who know, or some costumiers out there who know. Yes. Um, I'll Ooh. tell you one thing: the bill looks terrific. I am really, really pleased with that. Um, I don't know whether you can see. Um, Adam designed it. Is it called an understitch? Yes. Uh, yes. To stop the seam yes. from from rolling. Yeah. On the front, mm -hmm. so it's sort of hidden. Is that right? Is that can you yes, see it underneath? Right. Understitch is correct. Yes, absolutely, and it sits really well, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah, I was pleased. Very crisp. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so, a good pattern and obviously really good pattern. There, and the instructions are straightforward because yep. it's come up. Beautiful. I managed it. Yeah, completely. And really enjoyed making it. So if you want to have a go, you can buy the pattern. Uh, the link will be in the description below and uh, you can go to Adam's Etsy page. That's where he's selling it. And he includes the special fabric for the for the visor. So you don't have to go and find it. So it's really, really good. I love it. Oh, now and he's thought, he's thought of everything. Good now, one. Now I'll be, I just need to be with you walking down the West End, don't, East End, <laughs> sorry. We'll plan that. There's a New yeah. Year's resolution. Oh, it'd be lovely. So this is my make. What about your make? Because you said you were doing something different. You've, 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 you've gone uh, away from dressmaking and you, you've made something else. What have you been doing? Well, we, we've got a little girl in our life who's going to be too soon. And I wanted to do something. And um, <laughs> so I thought I would get a bunch of felt and I would make her a little book. And it's a six page book. Oh, look at that, it's my, it, the rainbow. <laughs> see, I know, I know, in line with this. So she's going to learn about the color spectrum. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Oh. So there's going to be six pages. Okay. And then each page starts with something with the letter of. So for the red page, mm -hmm. we have R, so we have a road. Oh, look at that, Carol. And on the back is one. So this is the first page of one to six. So yeah. there's an end. So she learned about a word, yeah. the number one, and a shape. So this Brilliant. is a triangle. Okay. So in the orange page, O is for octopus. So oh, look at him. <laughs> and then on the back, we have a square. square. And the number two. So she can count to two. And then Y is for yo-yo. Oh, brilliant. For three, and we have a diamond or a rhombus. Oh. I don't know if you can teach a two-year-old to say you rhombus. Can. You, you Why will. Not? <laughs> <Why not? laughs> um, green, green is for gate. Oh, brilliant. And I think I'm going to put a little sheep in the pocket here. Oh, of it's course. Cool. Yes, yeah, a sheep yeah. or a pig. <laughs> a little wool patch sheep, how about oh, that? Oh, that would be lovely. And then four. Lovely. And and four in a rectangle. So yeah. there's another new shape. And then B is for bow, for blue. Oh. And then we have a trapezoid with five. Well done. And then finally, P for purple is for pineapple. <laughs> this was fun. This is yeah. Great. And then six in a circle. Oh, well so, done, you. So that's, and I've got to make a little cover. And then I'm going to use, because I, I, this through the sewing bee this year, I learned about that Priam tool. 
oh, yeah. and installing installing the poppers. Yeah. And no. I looked, yes, I looked the other day, and you can use that tool to install an eyelet. So I'm going to take, I'm going to put an eyelet in the corner of each of these pages, yeah. and I'm going to put a big key ring in it. Oh, so brilliant. It can yeah. be hung on something or it can be yeah. a big bracelet or something. Yeah, so, um, oh, I've got one at like um I've got one somewhere. Now. Where's Stuart going? I use those quite a lot. Where are you? They're, they're ah. a big, like a big silver thing. I don't know what I've done with it. Like a like a ring binder folder. They're they're, they're about that big, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, this one is huge. I, it's around here somewhere. Yeah, it's around well, it's somewhere. Somewhere. And so I'm using the Ooh. the hole punch. You know, the rotary hole punch where you dial the size. Yeah. And then in order to get to make a clean hole you know, you put a piece of cardboard underneath. Yeah, yeah. And that helps you make a good clean hole. And once oh, you've got the brilliant. hole, then you can put the two ends of your eyelet into that tool and uh, hopefully. <laughs> oh, I bet that was really nice doing that in the evenings, wasn't it? Just oh, it was so your much mind off fun. It just, just something completely creative in a different yeah. way. It's not a commission. There's no yeah. expectations, you know, and it's just working on little a little thing, you know, which is great fun and, and bright colors. And let's have a look at the gate. It. Let's have a look at the gate again. Oh yeah. Have you have you have you hand sewn over the top of that? Uh, no, everything is machine stitched. Just oh wow! Quick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I love two, it. Two layers, and then on on, and then I for this one I just connected it with one stitch. You know, I didn't. And on some of them, I stitched around the middle of the flower yeah. on some of them. Um, but that it was, was just, uh, oh, just give yourself some peace. Don't, don't, don't make this too hard, yeah. you know? Yeah, oh, um, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because oh, children, I think, I think children get bored of toys easily anyway, don't they? She'll look at it for a couple of months and then it will be- Yeah, that's know, right. So, in, the, in, the, yeah. in the bottom of a big plastic crate. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so you don't want to spend so much time on it, but just nice to, as you say, get oh, away from the usual work. I think we all have to. I mean, you've you've been running a business. That's a that's a lot of work. There's a lot on your mind. Yeah. It's all it involves many things, and I think every now and then we need to just do something which just takes the mind away from absolutely you know, the, the worry and the yeah. pace and the. Indeed everything and just and, so, and sometimes that's in we take our mind away by doing something similar in the field like me with knitting or crochet but sometimes I find I want to get completely away from it so I'll go out for a run or like you'll you'll go out for a walk or, or a cycle that's as well won't you that's right that's right or go down to the garden you know yeah. and just just do something but yes I think it's the, the mind just go it's we're, we're, it's a cyclical thing isn't it you know it's yeah. weekly and the bills come in monthly, don't they? Yeah. And then you know what, the accountant, and that's a yeah. yearly thing, and it's, it's this spiral. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and before you know it, it's the year gone by where we are now. But two good things um, to think about over Christmas is, um, is the sewing bee. That's on the two Christmas editions. So make sure you, you tune in for those or put your, your, your sky box or whatever you have on record so you can watch those because it will be good to talk about those in the new year we can come back and yes, talk okay. about what they made and um uh, mm -hmm. and how they got on because it's always fun isn't it it's always fun yeah it's such a good formula isn't it and then mm -hmm. then the new season will be back on come march april mm -hmm. So okay, so we'll we be... might have to think about doing our 10 weeks again. <laughs> that's right. And the competition. And that's always interesting. Yeah. To see how that, you know, ebbs and flows and people have a good day and a bad day and, yeah. and then how it all evens out yeah. into the winner. All right. Well, look forward to that. Indeed. Now, talking about competition, let's finish off with a, 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 a little quiz. I, I've drawn up some questions. You didn't say there was going to be a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. They're, they're easy, I'm sure. And you at home, you can join in as well for a bit of Christmas fun, a little <laughs> quiz. Um, question one. People who sew may wear this on their finger to protect themselves. <laughs> well, that must be our good friend, the thimble. 
fantastic. Yes. Is that it? It is. We talked about it last week. Where's yours? There we yeah. go. Lovely. Okay. Well done. You've got one one point. Keep them that simple, please. <laughs> uh, number two. Uh, this is what you do to temporarily join fabric together with a long removable stitch. What okay. is it called? It's it, it, that's called basting. Ding. And uh, this is. Yep, this is the first thing to be tidied up and put where it belongs. So that's your basic Okay. Phew. Okay, that's two down. <laughs> what technique or name is used for making a piece of fabric go from 2D to 3D, like a form of shaping? Like a for a form of shaping. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's what is it called when we get when we take the bit of fabric from flat and we're making it 3D? What is that? We're inserting something. What is that what called? About, is it called ease? Is it called uh, ease or is it called you're making two? Is it darting? I mean, you're changing the shape. Ah. Yay, it's a dart, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well done. Yeah, I suppose. Yes, I suppose it's that classic, as we talked about with the bust, it's flat, but we want yes. to get that shape there, don't we? That's correct. Yes, yes. So you can do that by having two different sizes of fabric. So one is eased onto the other, you know, and then that creates, ah, yeah. that creates a, th a three dimension. But darting, I suppose, is, is the most obvious, yeah. And are there any places where darts only really appear? Or do you find in couture work, you put darts in a, wherever, anywhere? Wherever, wherever they're needed. I mean, you see jeans now, if you look at the knees of some of the jeans, you'll see on either side of the knee, you'll see darts. Oh, you really? See darts. Yes, you see darts in the elbow. Sometimes they'll take of the vertical dart, that of a skirt, and they'll move it around to the hip line. Oh. So you can transfer that three-dimensional look. You can move fullness from one part of a garment to another. A bust dart, you can take uh, a side bust dart, you can move it up into the shoulder. You can split that dart into three. You can have three small darts, which equal the size of the large dart that oh. was horizontal. There's all sorts of things you can do. Oh, now my mind is yeah. blown. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot different than knit and pearl, isn't it? it? it indeed. <laughs> I'm, and then I've got to go look at my jeans too. <laughs> right. What tool? is yeah. long and pointy and very handy to use at the sewing machine. <laughs> right, long and pointy. Yeah. Am I a bit too vague there, am I? <laughs> and it, well, I'm just thinking I've got very long and pointy scissors. I've got, but they're useful for cutting thread. Yeah. I've got a crochet hook, but that's oh, yeah. not really useful for well, sewing. So it's long I mean, it, though, isn't it? It's what long you, and pointy. What do you use the crochet hook for then? So I use that for turning. Well, sometimes oh. I use it to repair. Yes. But if I make a rouleau, then I yes. use the crochet hook to turn. Yeah. We use that in one of our videos. No, nope. well, that's not what I've got on my list here. I'll give you a couple okay. more, couple more guesses. Being that's very not generous. long and pointy. Long and pointy. Well, I, maybe, I maybe, I was, was, maybe I was wrong with pointy. Uh, yeah, it might be a bit more blunt because you don't want to pierce your fabric as you're as you're getting near that presser foot. Oh, so to guide. Ah, yeah. ah, ah, ah. Okay, so okay to guide. I would use either. <laughs> I would use no, no. I would use either the tweezer or the awl. Ah, it's the awl. Well done. Yes. Look. <laughs> Long and pointy. Let's have a look at your all. Perhaps yours isn't long then. Oh, perhaps it's not long. No, it's definitely pointy. Well, it, it is. Yes. So, so, so when you're when you're moving, I've got a piece of felt here. But when you're moving, um, you're moving That's fabric it. through the machine. It's yeah. it's it's not so pointy that it will go through the fabric. Is that yes? So you can use it to to steer and to just guide the fabric through yeah. the presser foot. That's I, it. 
I oh, love it. Since okay. you taught me about the all, I use mine all the time now. Yeah. All. It, all. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. You're on fire, Carol. Oh. <laughs> four. Four out. Four out of four so far. Right now, he's like a bonus round. Um, you've got to name as many hems as you can. Types of hems. Off you go. Uh, pin hem. Oh. Machine hem. Oh, yeah. Uh, gathered hem. Um, yeah, bubble hem. Blind uh, hem. Yeah. Backstitch hem. Uh, <laughs> double hem. Yeah. Three seconds left. Invisible hem. Yeah, well done. Uh, One. Uh, <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> okay, how did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Um, on my list here, you could have said rolled hem. Oh, okay, rolled hem. Yes, hand rolled hem. Yes. Um, and I, I, I got, I got this one off the internet. I don't know whether this one's right. A piped hem. Would you have a pipe tem? You could have a pipe tem. Yes, of course. Ah, oh, you could have a scallop tem as well. Woo! There we are. I'll give you that one. Extra. Okay, all right. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points there. Okay, is that all right? That's very so, good. How many I, did you get at home? Did you get more please, than Carol? <laughs> please, please. Yes. I like I like the comments when people come in and say, you twit. There are actually 30 <laughs> more, you know. <laughs> You missed off this one, but no, you've got everything <laughs> else on my list. Yeah. Oh, it's it's all it's all a bit of fun. It's all it? fun. This is fun. Yeah. I'm going to tot up your scores. Uh -oh. You have full house, a hundred percent, Carol. <laughs> well, I can finish the year now with a feeling of success. <laughs> oh well. Oh. That's 2021. What a year we've had thoroughly enjoyed our year i remember the year very well with an email from you um oh. and it was in the christmas holidays and i didn't believe it i thought this is not right this is this is a this is a, a spoof email it was too nice and then i saw oh. you on instagram and then i took up the courage to respond to you and that was in january and then i think we had a chat and then before you know it, we then had the idea for the Sewing Bee in March, where we did 10 episodes each week. And you were doing highly detailed tutorials in those 10 weeks. And we had some wonderful responses to that. I hope we can do that again. And then here we are now over the last three months doing, doing videos. So what video? Yeah. It's been and a just... fabulous year, Carol. I've loved our time together. I've enjoyed every minute of it. And I think for me, um, you know, this is, it's, it's a solitary life when you're, you're sitting by yourself I and mean, nobody's helping you. And I'm, I'm a master. I, I'm a one, one person master. And I, if I do collaborate with other people, then they'll take part of the job and they'll do it in their solitary oh, you know, yeah. videos as well. And um, I, this year I've had, chances to collaborate but we've all had to be very careful and mm. and um and I like to uh I think I like to get out and talk about what I do and it's it's not easy is it it's not easy to talk no. about what you do to explain to people no. what you do yeah. it's it's that's really challenging and when we first started out I you know I felt like I was stumbling through it a little bit I wasn't really at ease and and so this year has been very good for me, just feeling more comfortable oh. about doing that, about chatting. And you've made it so easy. Oh well, so, thank you. We would we wouldn't have known, and I'm and I know many of the viewers <laughs> commented on you right from the beginning. We would have never have known that it was it wasn't as comfortable. But um, you 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 just you, well you you're just such a professional. But uh, it's <laughs> well it, this coming together is nice. Then if you're mainly on your own. As you say, as a master, you you don't have that much contact. So this has been yeah. it's been wonderful, and and of course it's been wonderful to share that knowledge um, that you've got um, and and share it with me. I've been learning, and our audience is learning, and just loving listening because there aren't actually that many sewing shows on oh. YouTube where you could just listen to people talk about the art that we love. We love doing it. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and one thing I've liked, really, really got a kick out of is just seeing your shop. You know, oh. I feel like I'm, I'm going somewhere, you know, and yeah. I, you know, you, you disappear and you pull out an example of something <laughs> or, you know, and, yeah. and I, the people to see the studio in the background, Indeed. I'm sure it's interesting yeah. and I hope our viewers feel like they're coming into a space, which yeah. is, you know, a creative space where they can then, you know, ask questions freely and, and will, you know, hopefully we'll know the oh. answer. Right, let us know more topics in the comments below of what you would like covered. We have got the, the jersey and the knit one coming. Um, that's taking a bit of planning uh, for us um, because obviously it's a, it's a huge one, but we have got that in the pipeline. So that will probably be coming in January. But if there are other topics and it doesn't matter uh, how big or how small, because it's about, it's about talking about sewing to you. And if there's a, something, a, a specific thing you want, as always, write it in the comments and we will get on to it. Um, have a lovely holiday season, whatever you celebrate, Christmas, New Year, and considering all that's going on, uh, we will see you on the other side and we'll be back fresh, ready to go again for 2022, won't we? We will do. And thank everybody out there. Thank you, people, for helping us build a community where we can talk about creating. And we'll see you in 2022, everyone. Bye-bye.